Let's talk about some common traps newbie freelancers fall into. Coming up. Hello and welcome back to the Freelanceverse. Thanks so much for coming back to the channel once again. I hope you're all doing well. This week's video is especially uh, important for newbies out there, for newbie freelancers, because I'm going to talk about seven common traps that newbie freelance translators fall into. So let's get started. Trap number one, test translations. I made a video dedicated to this subject here. You can click there if you want the, the whole uh, idea about it. What it basically is, agencies will send out test translations before working with a translator, which is not technically a bad idea, right? You can do that. I understand that it can be very insightful with the, with the right uh, text. So you can actually test the competencies of a translator. What some agencies do is the texts are way too long, like more than one page is already too long. And I see people with like five, 10 pages, 5,000 words test translations for free, which is ridiculous. If someone uh, wants you wants to test you for a longer text, they have to be paid like a normal job, then it's perfectly fine. Uh, if you do something for free, make sure to not go over one page. That ties in a bit with trap number two, which is scammers. And scammers are very uh, common on the internet and we work mostly on the internet, so it happens, right? Your email address is out there. Your email address is probably on pros. It's on the website. It's on any other kind of platform. So it's very easy to find. So you will receive phishing emails all the time and they can become very targeted. I've seen some very targeted phishing emails. Uh, most of them are just bulk phishing, which is very easy to, easy to, to uh, how do you say to identify and also they probably your spam filter already filters them but targeted phishing attacks even spear phishing attacks uh, happens also it especially since i do youtube it happens actually quite frequently I've, so be very careful with, with clicking unknown links especially with like shortened links tiny urls you know or when it just says here and then before clicking on here make sure to just uh, hover over here so you can see actually the the url where it takes you and then you very quickly see that it's some kind of weird weird website that you don't want to click on another common way to scam in the language industry is through test translations they have a text of hundred thousand words and they split it up into chunks of thousand and they send it to a hundred freelancers everyone translates these hundred these thousand words right and they have a complete text even though if it's not coherent and it's probably not very good for them but they have a free text of a hundred thousand words by professional translators right so um yeah that's a common way to scam people so make sure to really background check the agencies you do test translations for you can do that via blueboard on, on pros you can just on google you can type in the name of the agency or the language service provider and then also enter blueboard in two words and usually something comes up from pros where you can see the ratings in the last 12 months. And if you have a rating like four stars and above, that's okay. Anything below, I would, uh, I would walk away. Trap number three, saying yes to everything or in, in reverse, the struggle to say no or how to say no. I will make a video specifically on this topic, how to say no. But here, just a, a quick summary of this, of this trap, saying yes to everything. By that, I mean jobs, I mean deadlines, I mean, uh, you know, additional things for free. Like if you deliver a translation, and I see this all the time. I deliver a translation, they say, oh, this and this is not good. Can you please revise that and send it back? And uh, I say, yes, I can do that for this and this uh, money, you know, I, it will take me one hour. So I will charge my hourly rate. And then they will say, oh, no, it's still part of the translation. Just do it for free. And I say, no, no, that's not how that works. Right. I did my job that's finished. And now you're asking for, for an additional job, which will also be charged. Never do work for free. It's it's not how it works. I have a minimum charge. So even if it's just one sentence, I charge my minimum rate. That's it. And also deadlines, don't say just yes to every deadline, even if, if it's a job that you finally got and you really worked hard for it. But if they ask you to translate five, 6,000 words until tomorrow, you don't need to do that. You don't need to work through the night. You can say, you know what, I can do that gladly, but it takes me until Friday, it takes me until Monday, you know? And most of the time, 80, 90% of the time, they say yes. Right? Almost every request I get is urgent, but it's never really urgent. And also say no to jobs you're not qualified for. Super important. 
don't just take everything on that ties into the next point which is the next trap is called over promise that's a, what a lot of newbies do in order to get jobs they just say oh yeah i can do this I, i'm good in marketing i'm good in medical uh, i will deliver this uh, perfect translation by tomorrow first of all never promise a perfect translation it doesn't exist it's subjective don't take on stuff from specializations you are not qualified for because that's very dangerous over promising right and also don't promise deadlines that you can't keep unless you are working through the whole night 24 hour shift it doesn't make sense because then your translation is going to be crap if you work for so long you can really only concentrate for five six hours realistically right so rather just uh, be realistic don't over promise say you know oh this is a really medical job i'm sorry i cannot do that what i then do i refer it to one of my colleagues usually that i know is specialized in medical this way you help the client also from your side so they also can trust you in a way that you know you don't just say no uh, you can say no that's perfectly fine i just don't really like to just strictly say no i always like to offer a solution so i usually give the contact of someone else that can do it next trap i lost count maybe five yeah i think five bidding websites Bidding websites are a huge trap. Be careful with it because, uh, and I don't only mean Fiverr. Fiverr is, is okay. I mean, at least you still have the, the, your own control of the prices. What I mean is they are disguised as agencies kind of, and I guess they are agencies in a way. But what they do is you get an email that there is a job available in their portal, right? In their job portal. What you then have to do is click on the job and you have to give your bid. For example, they say, uh, we have a 50 words job for tomorrow, for how much can you do it? And then you enter your bid and they usually say, the average bid is $5 or something. So you already know if you go over above the average bid, you will never get it. So it's really like a race to the bottom because this email goes out to hundreds of people and someone will enter there like three dollars so if you go somewhere around the average you will never get it it's demeaning it devalues our profession i really dislike this kind of uh, topic but it happens so often so i have to address it and i i've, I've tried it out just to see how how it is if there is actually uh, some kind of value in it and when it's really a specialized request, so sometimes there was a, a request coming in from, from one of these platforms for Swiss German, for IT, so I was really the specialist in this. And uh, I went slightly above average and I got the job once in a while. But apart from that, you always have to go below average and even quite uh, severely below average to get the job and then it just doesn't make sense. Next trap. I wrote burnout slash weekend work. <laughs> Just uh, make sure to not overwork yourself. I know in the beginning it's very tempting. Uh, I speak to a lot of newbies that say, oh, I work 15 hours a day and that's fine. And weekends included, uh, they are, they are uh, quite surprised that I have normal weekends. And I understand I was the same. And when you start, you're still very motivated and very fresh and you probably have no like medical conditions and nothing and that's perfectly fine. Just think about the future as well and i don't know i sound very old I, I don't think i'm very old yet but just think about the future self the 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 older self and just uh, go easy on yourself because if you if you keep going like this at this rate for three years it's very likely that something will happen and you will burn out and that's not what you want to do right you want to have a more or less regular working day that you can keep going for several several years at this rate so uh, if you do weekend work just make sure to take then time off in the in the following week right and do i have one more i think so yes i i wrote tenders uh, as my last trap and step by tenders i mean uh, like of course there are very good tenders uh, like not all tenders are bad just there are some seriously messed up tenders out there and you have to be aware of them and just be very when someone when someone asks you to do a tender and by tender i mean like someone says you know we have this project uh, we we are looking for a pool of translators uh, could you please state your best rate, your your work capacity, your your certificates, your address, your name, your social security number? No, not that. But they, it almost feels like that. They want to know everything. And to prepare a tender for yourself, it takes time. Like you have to invest two, three hours to prepare a proper tender, right? And more often than not, they are just um, quite uh, bullshit, you know, uh, and you will not get a job. And you are basically providing a company with all your information, all your data. And in today's climate, data is currency, right? That's if they if they send this out to 
crazy numbers let's say 5,000 people goes out this tender right and maybe 10 15 20 percent replies they have a huge amount of information that could, they can use freely they have your address they have your email they have your phone probably they have your degree they have your price so they have a perfect pool of translators uh, that they can target then with probably cheaper work than this tender actually was when someone asks please provide your best rate also with a volume discount volume discounts are crazy don't do that i don't understand why people do it they say oh, we will provide you with a lot of uh, work so give us a discount it doesn't make sense right if you get a lot of work you want to make a lot of money so why would i give you discount if i get more work that doesn't make sense to me but a lot of people do it so just be careful with tenders before you participate in a tender make sure to background check the company uh, extensively and maybe don't include everything they they ask you to it, for some like personal information you can just write uh, upon request for example so if they are actually serious to working with you they will get back to you and ask for the for the additional information don't just give everything away up front and maybe before you do the tender ask for some more information because usually these these scammy tenders they are they don't give a lot of information like you you will see what i mean when you get the first one you don't really know what the project is about there's no description of the end client etc so now just be careful with these uh, and you will be fine there you go these are my seven traps for newbie translators to be careful uh, about so watch out for them if you've already encountered them and maybe fell into them that's okay perfectly fine let me know in the comments your experience with it uh, but you can always crawl out of them that's no problem and maybe you have to make the mistakes in the beginning to learn from them you know i can i can just give you my experience but I probably fell into all of these traps as well. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe and it matters a lot. And I see you next Monday with the next video. Bye bye.